right, if loving you is wrong, fans, here's my episode review for Contraband Season 5, Episode 4. Best episode since Episode 1. Literally, this episode, I feel, definitely um, left a good taste in my mouth in regards to watching it. I didn't feel bored throughout it. Honestly, it felt pretty solid from start to finish. Uh, a lot of lengthy scenes, but that's because of the fact there's a lot of info to go through in these scenes. So uh, the first, and again, I did not watch it live because I was asleep, so I don't have any opinion on, man, there were so many commercials because I wasn't watching live. I was asleep. Oh, well. But in any case, uh, we start off with Ian and Alex. And again, I know I said this before in a couple videos over the past week, but Shout out to Amanda Clayton for her acting in this episode. Just bravo, bravo. And Ian as well uh, in this scene because I'd be freaking out too. That's why it's like, you know, um, at some point, you know, if I ever get my own place, you know, I'll probably get cameras installed or something like that because I never want to be put into a me too times up position like this. So, you know, he's Ian is trying to calm Alex down. She's having like trouble remembering what had happened last night. She's saying like her being at this house and everything is something she wouldn't do. But thankfully, thankfully, as she's about to leave, you're like, I want to call the police. Okay, hey, do whatever you got to do. Because Ian's like, you know what? I'll see what I can do to make it out of this mess. But before she can even manage to get to the door, that's when she starts remembering things like, you know, oh, my God, the kids, the babysitter. Um, things about, you know, I didn't want this life. I don't even like this neighborhood, but slowly but surely she begins to remember and thankfully says, oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that on you. And it's like, yeah, that's some crazy shit to not remember. And then throw in my face in regards to, you know, drugging and, you know, t assaulting you essentially. But, um, she goes outside and vomits and then Randall sees what's going on after Ian comes outside, you know, just to make sure she's okay. Clearly she's not. And then Randall just shows his ass in more ways than one. He's just taunting her, you know, asking what she was up to last night. And then um, pr pretty much, you know, when Ian says he's going to kick his ass, he pretty much drops his pants. And yeah, and uh, he keeps asking, oh, yeah, so is this the baby daddy? I will admit I did like that line because he sounds just like the viewers. Wait, is Ian the baby daddy? What's going on here? Again, I love those little nuances in the writing where it's like the characters ask questions or say things that we as viewers have been asking or thinking for the longest time. Uh, he tells them to, oh, excuse me. Um, eventually, they make it across the street. Ian is just tired of Randall's trash, trash talk. And, you know, she's like, look, leave me alone. Both of y'all go to your own houses and that's it. And uh, as I think somebody says, take your ass home. And then he drops his pants again. I got a question. Uh, couldn't Randall be arrested for indecent exposure? Just just asking a question. So Alex stumbles into the house where she's confronted by Brad. Marcy's there with the baby. And, you know, she's like, no, no, I'm going upstairs to get the kids ready for school. Uh, newsflash, Alex, they are at school already. And then Alex asks about the babysitter. And then Brad questions about where she was last night, confronts her about all of her online cheating. And she's pretty much indifferent to all of it. She doesn't care. And then Marcy jumps in, gloating about how they're engaged. Alex couldn't give a shit. And then she pretty much is at the point where, hey, well, at least I can have kids. And Marcy decides, oh, yeah, I'll slap this. And I'm like, well, Marcy, you kind of jumped in when you didn't need to. Not saying I dislike Marcy in this scene as much as I did in previous episodes this season. And again, guys, I'm not a Marcy hater, but I'm just feeling like, you know, she honestly doesn't need to butt in during certain scenes because it doesn't really involve her. I'm just saying again, I'm not. And no, it's like, well, Jeremy, you love Alex. It, it, this has nothing to do with that. I'm just saying that nobody asked for her commentary. The only thing worthy of her saying was I've already fed your baby. Don't worry about it. That's pretty much it. And um, at that point. We have, uh, yeah, Mark, uh, Alex just saying she's done. I never loved, I never wanted to be with you. I never wanted to get married. Brad's like, well, why did, why did we get married in the first place? Why did you say that? And it's like, no, you know what? I always did what you wanted to do. You know what? Fine. I'm, I'm out of here. So let's see here. She leaves everything behind. And pretty much as she's storming out of the house, making a spectacle of herself, you know, Terrell is at the porch of Kelly's house. And then you have Randall in his yard seeing everything going on. And she's pretty much done, you know, um, questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Randall comes up after Alex storms off, well, drives off and, you know, asks Marcy what she's doing with Brad at that house. And, you know, they honestly don't give a damn about Randall. And then he's like, well, just so you know, 
She was with Ian. Points across the street. Ian's outside. And then Brad doesn't care. We have Natalie in her burger fast outfit. I mean, uniform. When was the last time we saw Natalie in her burger fast work uniform? <laughs> and um, Marcy tells Randall about all the guys Jennifer Pepper was with online. He's like, hey, go online. Check it out for yourself. Uh, then we go to Natalie and Terrell. Uh, basically... She gives Lucian a phone call. She says, hey, it's legit. You can let him into Kelly's house and just make sure that Justice doesn't see him. And she goes in the house, gets the key. Terrell comes in, uh, pretty much says, hey, my mom told me about what Kelly did to that Travis guy. And uh, wh where's Justice? Um, and then Lu Natalie says, oh, well, he's staying with us. What time does he get out of school? I want to see him. And it's like, um, I'll let you know. So I'm wondering if like Natalie calls Lucian or maybe gets in contact with Te Kelly. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe she um, stops by the jail or calls Lucian to talk to Kelly. One or the other. But I don't really know how that's going to work it's like you know how are you going to say oh um i'll let you know what time he gets out of school and it's like well what if lucian and kelly both say no don't let terrell see justice it's like terrell might come knocking on your door it's like hey is uh, justice home i mean what are you going to do then but again it was just like a quick scene so we'll probably get follow-up in the next episode so i'm not going to get you know doc points or anything for that i was just curious because honestly natalie was in a semi semi awkward position just because it's like you know yeah how do i tell this you know man fresh out of jail that uh yeah your baby mama said that justice can't see you yet until she gets out of jail i don't know but um kudos to the actor playing um uh, Terrell just because there are a couple scenes I think Terrell and then one with Larry where they're talking when no one else is around it's like after uh, Natalie leaves he's just looking around saying hmm home that was a good scene I, I don't mean I thought it was good I know some people might be like man that was just a weird scene why didn't they end it when uh, Natalie left I think that the actor did a good job portraying uh, you know a person who had been behind bars for a long time and he's finally in a stable home environment you know just little things like running his hand on the counter in the kitchen or you know putting his foot on the um the uh, step for the trash can just little things like that you know like um i i just and i i want to say the word imagine because you know honestly i haven't been in that position where i've been locked up and then i get home after a long time or uh, uh somebody you know, defending the country overseas. And then after a long time, they're back in a stable home environment. So I think that was a good way of ending the scene where he's just looking around the house, just fascinated with everything because it's been so long. And I think he even mentioned that, oh, I've never seen this house. So yeah, th that was definitely um, a, a good scene there. Then we go over to Randall looking up Jennifer Pepper online. I'm probably going to have to do... I know somebody wants me to do a video where I go over every name that Randall mentioned. I think even Marcy mentioned off a list of names earlier in the episode. And I think he even comes across Larry. But I don't know if that means he put two and two together that Larry is the Larry that he knows. Uh, Eddie's screaming to get out of his jail cell. Lucian comes by and taunts him. Pretty much wants to know exactly what happened. And talks about how Steven set this whole thing up. Uh, then Lucian talks to Kelly saying he he's going to talk to oh sorry that that was a page flip I got two pages of notes because a lot of stuff happened in this episode um, he's telling Kelly that he's going to talk to the DA and he wants to see the information in that Bible but he doesn't want to take the information because then they'll be asking how he got it so basically he looks over the intel says it's legit and um, Eddie sees the contraband saying that you know she shouldn't have it up in here. And Lucian will go have the public defender come by to see her. And the public defender's name is Carl Adams. And, um, you know, Kelly is unsure because he's just a young kid. But he reassures her that, hey, you're not alone in this. Rick got some good information as well. We're working as hard as we can. So that was a good scene. So I'm also glad that they let us know as an audience oh that's how eddie sees the contraband because you know in the trailer breakdown I'm like i wonder if he just gets out of jail and because kelly was you know taunting him and everything he just decides to take the bible just to be an asshole but he actually sees the evidence as well so i'm wondering okay i'll get to this at the end of the episode so let me say my thought on that later but we have steven and esperanza a brief scene not too bad i don't know why but 
Does Esperanza look extra fine in this episode? Maybe it's just her demeanor. I think it's her demeanor because I really liked Esperanza in the last episode and to actually see her happy in this episode was great. And unfortunately, Lucian comes in and is like, look, you can't keep Eddie in there for long. Tell me exactly what happened. How did he get arrested? And Lucian played it out by the books and he tells them to get Eddie out immediately. And, you know, neither one of them want to be the one to do it because he's going to be mad as hell when he gets out. But eventually he gets out. And again, we're almost at the end of the episode. We'll, we'll talk about it. So Ian's at work, you know, sipping on a glass of the good stuff. A crazed Alex burst into his office where it seems like the secretary is trying to stop him, uh, stop her and everything. Um, tells him that, hey, I walked out of my old life because of you. Oh, no, don't worry. It's not a bad thing at all. Because trust and believe, Ian, even though Alex remembers everything now. Uh, she would not be the first person I would want to see, especially I, I would go to work to distract myself from this weekend's activities. But yeah, Alex would be the last person I want. Well, I don't know if I'd say that, but here's, and again, I'm not going to dock points for this, but kind of like, you know, Randall showing his behind earlier in the episode. I got a question for you, Ian. So you and Alex had a quite the evening last night. Well, yeah, quite the, um, excuse me, quite the encounter last night. Alex sees you drinking and I, I don't even know if Alex is just drunk or just because I'm thinking to myself, how the hell is she driving from point A to point B in this episode again? I don't drink. OK, so I don't really know how that works. Like I know. Is it a tolerance thing? Like, you know, oh, yeah, you can have a couple drinks and as long as you got food in your stomach, then it shouldn't affect your motor skills. But for Alex to just actively be drinking this strong stuff. And driving multiple locations, I think that's a cause of concern, in my opinion. So, it's just little things like that that don't make this episode a 10, but it certainly is a high-rated episode, I will say that. And then on top of her driving, it's like, so you're once again going to give this woman something strong to drink, knowing that not 12 hours ago, well, most likely, maybe 12 hours or so, basically... Less than 24 hours ago, this woman drank a lot of strong stuff, came on to you, came out of her um, drunken stupor. Well, actually, you had to wake her up. And then she accused you of drugging and assaulting her. You really think you want to give her something to drink at the workplace? And even though I would have been tempted, he turned her down and is like, can I call you later? Nope. As soon as you call, I'll find somebody else to scratch my itch. But before she decides to leave, uh, she says, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to work at this law firm. And she doesn't know a damn thing about the law. So what happened to her being an actress or having a law where she's walking around naked? Mm -hmm. Keep the heels on, though. I like my woman tall. Uh, I just want to see you strip. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the secretary comes back in saying that Larry wants to meet with Ian. The DA comes in. And Linda, who, yeah, Linda, yeah, Linda, pretty much he's a bit concerned about the public defender Carl Adams and the fact that, hey, he's just a kid, but, you know, he says he has some strong evidence. And if memory serves from last season, it's like, hey, you know, uh, I think when Ian was setting up the arrangement with the public defender, it's like, look, if you set up a meeting with the DA, then it's like, you know, if there's some sort of agreement based on the evidence, then you won't even have to step into court. So... You know, um, she's ba to sum up the scene, she comes in to see Larry face to face to ask Larry if there's anything that she needs to know before meeting up with the public defender and or going to court because she does not like surprises. Given the fact that this is a reelection term, reelection year coming up and a lot of voters are at the church, she needs to know that there aren't going to be any surprises. Larry is, you know, oh, no, 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 no. There's nothing you need to worry about. And as soon as the DA leaves, Larry shows Valid concern because why would a public defender, why would this young kid be bold enough to stand toe and toe with the DA? And Ian just tries to read, well, we were young once too. We used to kind of do that stuff to make a name for ourselves. But Larry is not so sure. So um, he tells, you know, Ian to leave, set up a meeting with the DA, even though, I mean, the uh, public defender who honestly doesn't even have to meet with them. So I don't know if, you know, Larry is going to meet with him trying to shake him up or, you know, intimidate him. But we'll just have to wait and see. But then Eddie gets out, uh, another officer gets him out, you know, unlocks the door and everything. And again, to sum up the scene, he takes Kelly's contraband. That's pretty much a scene in itself. You know, pretty much mocking her. Oh, yeah, you want to see? Oh, please, Eddie, please. What, what happened to shut up, Eddie? Yeah, you're going to be in here forever, Eddie. 
And then he um, looks over the information, the pictures and the evidence saying, oh, yeah, the people at the church will uh, pay a pretty penny for this. And then that's it. He leaves and that's the end of the episode. So overall, pretty strong episode. I ain't going to lie. I think this is a very good episode. Um, what would I score it? Like, um, you know, Randall just being an asshole. Alex's unexplained ventures from point A to point B while intoxicated the fact that ian gave her something strong to drink knowing full well what happened last night <sighs> but again i did like moments like esperanza's confidence um lucian reassuring kelly things were okay the natalie and terrell scene the opening scene basically from you know when alex and ian were together to when you know alex stormed away from uh, her house and then Brad <sighs> mm, then you know the setup I want to say 8.5 but I'm going to be honest I was quite satisfied with the episode I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 this was a great episode um, so there you go those are my thoughts but with that being said let me know if you agree is a 9 out of 10 too far too high uh is an 8.5 or an 8 probably more valid score but i have to admit the pacing of this episode was pretty good yes some scenes were really long but there was a put it this way some scenes were very long but important information was being discussed during those scenes i think maybe the only scene i would probably say okay this could be cut down um, probably the scene at the end with Eddie taking Kelly's Bible, but no, nah, it was the end of the episode. It wasn't any need to squeeze anything else in there. So yeah, nine out of 10. So with that being said, guys, thanks so much for tuning in as always. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new. Hit the bell notification icon if you haven't done so already. That way you can keep yourself up to date whenever I upload new content to the channel. On top of that, give this video a thumbs up since nine out of 10 Let's try to get uh, 90 likes on this video if we can. Comment your favorite parts of the video. Do you agree with my score? Also, check me out on social media. Links to all that good stuff is in the description box below. Shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. You can join in the fun for as low as $2 a month. And keep in mind, this is the only show that I need to review this week, even though I will be doing a sister's review today because we're not getting a sister's episode until next Wednesday. But keep in mind, this is the only show I need to review this week, so I have plenty of time to work on other content for Patreon, more stuff to post on eBay, and other fun stuff that I'm working on on the side. So I'm definitely making the most of this last full week of April since next week is going to be back to regular scheduled programming where we're going to have the return of Ruthless, um, the sisters finale, and then another episode of Loving You Is Wrong. But uh, with that being said, make sure if you'd like to donate anything to the channel, you do so either on PayPal or Cash App. Not mandatory, but you watching this video helps me out in more ways than you can know. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys, once again, and I'll talk to you all next time.